Okay, we're now recording. Uh, welcome all. As I noted in, in Slack, it'll be our last meeting, of course, of 2018. Um, and we'll talk about when we want to do our first meeting of 2019 um, near the end of this agenda here. Um, but um, let's see. Uh, to get us started here, though, I did want to do a quick sort of review of where we sit and what our deadlines are. I think everybody knows this pretty well by now, but, uh, but of course we're still aiming for a DSpace 7 preview release for late January, early February. Um, and the goal is really to get entities ready for then, or at least an initial version of entities ready for that preview release so we can start to show that off and people can start to play around with that a little bit and get a sense of what entities is going to look like in DSpace 7. Um, and after that, uh, we're, we're aiming for a, a beta in around April. Um, and then the final release uh, just prior to open repositories. Uh, so that's still the goals we're looking for here. Um, obviously, uh, to get to a, a preview release in late January, early February, we really need to get things uh, merged in and ready to go uh, at least two weeks in advance. So the DSpace 7 team last week talked on Thursday of last week, we talked about that our our tentative deadline, if we wanted to get, say, a, a preview release out at the very end of January, on January 31st, then we'd be talking about getting everything merged and ready to go by January 17th, basically. Uh, that's kind of like our, our first, um, first goal we would have to hit is trying to have everything ready to go by January 17th. So we have two weeks to kind of uh, prep stuff up, uh, get the release ready to go, and, uh, and get everything announced and all that. Uh, so that would be the same for this entities effort. Uh, and by getting things ready to go for entities, that means we'd have to have stuff ready to go on master, not just on our configurable entities branch we've been working off of. So we'd want to have everything ready to go into the master branch by that January 17th date. Uh, so that's just kind of the goals to, to lay forward. I think the rest of this meeting, it would be good to kind of uh, go through, of course, what pull requests are open, which will be the next thing on the agenda, see the status of each of those, and then discuss really uh, where we're going next, how we can try and hit that January 17th date, uh, and whether or not we have any concerns about hitting that date at this point in time. Um, and that's this is a good opportunity to kind of bring up those concerns if we find that that's going to be difficult to hit in any way, shape, or form. Uh, so that's kind of the quick intro and reminder of our goals. Any questions or comments just at a high level first before we move along? Or anything I forgot to mention there? Okay, not hearing anything. In that case, let's go ahead and uh, jump into uh, the second topic on the agenda, and let me go ahead and share my screen just because it'll probably be easier to to go through these together. Just a moment here. Let's see. Lost my big window. There we are. Uh, okay, my screen should be coming up here shortly. And let me go ahead and bump up the font here just a little bit. Move this out of the way. Um, okay, so I've listed here all of the pull requests that were open as of yesterday. Um, I don't know if there's been any new ones added. If there are, we can bring them up at the end. Um, so here's where we kind of sit in terms of things that are open and it's still in that review process. We still, of course, have the Angular user interface pull request, the main one, and I think there actually was a new one that was just opened up this morning that I haven't added into here. Yeah, that was about the, the journal um, example where on a journal item page, you now have that search component that searches within all of the articles uh, okay. of that journal. Okay, but obviously we need to get this first one in merged first, I would imagine, before that one would be ready to, to go in second. Yep, and it's also been updated to Angular 6. Awesome. Okay. So we have the Angular PR, and then I have a total of five um, pull requests on the REST side. Uh, so I think the best usage of our time here might be to just sort of dive into each of these 
briefly and get a quick status update and see if there's any that are ready to merge or if we can identify individuals who can kind of help bring these forward and get them ready to merge as quickly as possible. Um, does that seem reasonable to everybody here to just kind of look at each of these quickly? Yep. Okay. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and open up. I'm gonna just open it up a new tab here. Um, okay, so we have our Angular pull request, which um, I know I had done a code review of a while back and all of the issues that I had, had noted have already been um, resolved along the way here. Um, other than one about just kind of minor refactoring, but that's something we can take on uh, later on. Um, I know that last week we had talked about this, and Paulo, um, I know you've added a little bit of comments into here. You had said that you were going to take some time to to review this more. Um, and Alexander, last last you were in a meeting, I know you had talked about trying to review this more as well. So I don't know, are there outstanding concerns that we need to address here? Um, do we feel this is starting to look pretty good? Like what what? What have others seen in this pull request? What have you been able to review of it? Uh, hello. Hey, Paolo. Hi. I think um, Admire and Liv and Ben Art, they, they did uh, uh, an amazing job doing uh, this work so far. Uh, I just uh, uh, add some minor um, comments here to, to this code. I, I think we, we it would be a benefit we, if we uh, packed the 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 items or entities in in the same tree stru structure um, but beside that I, I think we should accept this uh, pull request you, you, we have other uh, things to to add to to this uh, work already done <laughs> Okay. And by the same tree structure, you're talking about the same folder structure, essentially. It, like yes. Describe here. Yes. I, I, if if I want to to um, add an, an entity or or change something on it, I I have to find the the. I have the, the the structure of, of an entity is spread across the the tree structure. The the uh, some party is in the the, the simple view, uh, other parties on the object list. I think we you should pack this on the same um, entity structure. Okay, trying to group them by by object essentially is what you're kind of a model here. or something yeah. like that. Okay. Yeah, I can understand that. Uh, that might be something that Art might have more comments on. I know he's not here today, but um, but that's something we could bring up in the D Space Seven meeting. Our next one's tomorrow, actually. Um, if he's if uh, unless Ben and Levin, you want to pass that along to see if Art has any comments on the structure here. Yeah, I, I will pass that along so that we have some feedback um, by uh, tomorrow. I think the reason why it's not in a tree structure, if I remember it correctly, is that there is overlap um, in the components, even for different um, data models. So that you would have some code duplication if you really do this per, um, uh, per item type. Okay. But I could be totally wrong. Yeah, just but yeah, I think if, if Art just wanted to respond to this, that'd probably be useful. And then we can kind of either bring it forward or decide that, yeah, it's not as easily doable as we thought. But I mean, it seems like a reasonable question to be asking. Um, so yeah, we'll get feedback from Art on that. Uh, and then we can get a sense of whether or not this makes sense uh, to refactor in this way at some point. Um, but it's good to know, Paulo, that, that you see this pull request as being in a good status and that this is more of a minor comment. So thank you. Okay, thank you. <laughs> 
Um, Alexander, did you have any chance to, to take a look at this at all, or did you have any comments you wanted to add onto this Angular uh, pull request? I, I tested the uh, uh, whole stuff uh, from the uh, web view, <laughs> and I have very little experience with Angular. Uh, okay. General. Uh, but what I have seen in the code uh, is good enough to merge. Okay. That's good feedback then. Okay, so that sounds like then we're at a state where this can go ahead and, and be merged. So I'm just writing myself some notes here and we can get this ready to go after the, the meeting. Okay, any last comments or questions then on this particular Angular PR? Okay. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to skip down to the REST API pull request if that's uh, all right, um, Leave it. I know there was another Angular pull request that you said was opened up. However, it's, since it's brand new, I don't think anybody's had a chance to review that. Um, and I'd like to get an update on the ones that others have reviewed first. So we can loop back to that. Uh, okay, so these are the these are the order approximately that these were opened up in. So let's look at the CSV import on the rest side of things. Um, and I know that this is one that both Paulo and I I can't seem to grab my scroll bar here. There we go. Uh, both Paulo and I had done some reviews on, and Ben has been taking in each of the. Uh, changes into account and kind of uh, adding in some additional uh, enhancements and fixes. Um, so as of the very last status, I know we were having Travis build issues on this for a while. That's been cleaned up as of yesterday. Um, I gave this another quick review yesterday and added a couple um, quick notes into here. The main one that I think is outstanding, which I agree with Ben on, um, is that I noted that the new uh, integration test does a lot of uh, messing around with objects itself. So it kind of creates objects itself and destroys them itself, cleans everything up itself. Whereas if we used um, a tool that we built for all the other integration tests, the abstract builder tool, um, this can all be automated. So we can actually remove a ton of the code out of this integration test. Um, and Ben had noted here that we could do this as a follow-up PR. And I think that's perfectly reasonable. Um, I just noticed that the integration test is much larger than it really needs to be. Um, but I guess, is there any other comments or questions on this? I'm the only one that gave it a thumbs up so far. Um, I'm not sure if there's anything outstanding from uh, Paulo or, or, um, or Alexander or anyone else um, that we need to be concerned about with the CSV port. I, I, I remember i don't know if is this pull request i i, I recall that it was a, a setting that was uh, um hard coded i think in the codes this relation okay it's, it's yeah this this relation was hard coded but it's been updated now so th i forgot okay. to resolve this but this has been fixed we can go ahead and resolve okay. that because i double checked that those were not hard coded anymore um, and yeah, this was another comment you had about this used to be called extra. There was a yeah. field called extra and it's now been renamed to okay. integral metadata. Um, so that can be resolved. So I think both of your two comments, yeah, I forgot to resolve these yesterday. Both of them have been cleaned up here, Paulo, but if you wanted to give it a last look, you are more than welcome to do so. Um, I just like to get this um, reviewed again quickly so that we can kind of uh, move this forward and merge it if it's ready to go. Okay, I will see it. So is that something that you're able to do a quick review on um, this week so we can try and get a, a thumbs up from you? Yes, tomorrow, this? tomorrow okay. I can. Okay, thank you, Paulo. So yeah, I think this is about ready to go. Um, as far as the, um, the integration test goes, I can create a JIRA ticket to track this because uh, I think it's important to clean up just because it's it's going to get messy and might step on other integration tests the way it's currently implemented. But um, but for now, it's it's fine enough to merge and we can create a follow-up PR. Thank you. That would be great. 
Okay. So that one is good. Let's jump back to our... So we got the virtual metadata update pull request. Uh, and this was the one that created some virtual beans uh, or a virtual bean interface, a concatenate bean, related bean, and the third one is not documented here right now. I'm forgetting the name of it, but there's a third one as well, um, which is somewhere down here. Um, in any case, this this has been. This includes the same code as that first PR, so it's important to get that first PR um, merged first because some of the same changes are in here. But it's been updated recently to kind of clean up, oops, clean up the issues that were noted um, by Alexander and um, and Paulo around the interface of the virtual bean and whether or not it can have multiple values. So I know there's been some refactoring here recently uh, that Ben has uh, noted in terms of the updates. Uh, so I did re-review this as of yesterday, um, and I added some more comments, which were all fixed immediately, and I just reviewed it again 35 minutes ago, um, and all of my comments were just related to Java docs that were missing. Uh, but I would appreciate someone else giving this a look, um, especially since, um, Paulo and Alexander, both of you had commented on the initial implementation. So I just want to make sure that you don't have any concerns about how it's been uh, refactored. So if, if one or both yes, of you I could can, look I at this. Review it again. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Alexander. So I think this is about ready to go as well. Um, I think it's just a matter of getting that, that final uh, review from, from, from you, Alexander, and then we can go ahead and get this merged. Um, it's just important we do, we merge 2269, the CSV one first, and then this one second, just because they include some of the same commits here. So if we can get those merged this week, that would be absolutely wonderful. Um, the third one here, relationships should link to items in the REST API. This was one we created as a separate ticket. Um, and this initially had Travis failures as well, but it had, it had been cleaned up. So this is a very small pull request that just adds in uh, the how links. It's 47 lines here. I, I saw the code. I, I, I agree with uh, the pull request. I think it okay. should be merged. Okay, could you go ahead and just give a thumbs up approval? I would appreciate okay. just being, uh, let's be honest and, and or, or document these within the pull request themselves. So you can go in and do the review changes here and do approve. You don't even have to add a comment, but if you do review pages approve, then that gives me the note that it's good to go. Okay. Uh, and that way I will go ahead and, and merge it uh, right away. But I, I definitely appreciate doing the reviews on the pull request just so we see um, who's had a chance to look at them. So if you could do that today um, or even now, then I can merge this right after the meeting. Okay. Okay, so that's, go ahead. Did you have anything else to say, Paulo? No, no. No, okay. Okay, so that's the first three. So I think those are, those are looking good. Uh, the fourth one here was one that I, I tried to review and got quite confused, I will admit. <laughs> Um, so this was our, our replacing the term entity throughout the code base, uh, which I know I had, I had talked about trying to replace it with item or item relationship. Um, as I started to review this, I got um, very confused by the terminology, I will admit, because we were, there were plurals in some areas where it's item relationships type and item relationships util, and then singulars in other areas, item relationship type service, item relationship type DOA, DAO. Um, and so this kind of like the terminology got really wonky and or weird, I guess is the better word for it. Um, and I had difficulty uh, understanding the code with the new terminology. So I'm just wondering, I guess I was rethinking in my mind how we can rename these appropriately without um, coming up with these very odd singulars and plurals that don't make much sense. And I don't know if anybody else had a chance to look at this, but I, I'm just going to note that it, it gets very, some of the objects and the, the terminology here gets very weird. So we end up with things like a param called relation item relationships util. 
um, which does not make much sense. Uh, it used to be just a relation entity, but we noted that the entity object is not a real object. It's more of a util class. So it's kind of, there's, there's very odd terminology here that I don't know the best way to resolve yet. Um, and I haven't had enough time to think about it yet. So I don't know if this is something we can resolve today, but, um, but I would encourage others to take a look at this and see if there's a way we can rename these classes to make more sense. Um, and also either standardize on all singular, all plural, so that we don't have relationships in some area and relationship in other areas. I think changing everything to be singular instead of having singular and plural mixed would be a simple thing to do, but coming up with names without using the concept entity I mean, is, is, is indeed sometimes hard. Uh, and I can see some examples in here that, that definitely can use a, a, a simpler name, especially if the word relationship occurs twice in the parameter, that shouldn't happen. Um, that's right. probably something with batch replacing um, names. But it, it, it is complicated to find good names for some, some of the classes and some of the parameters. Yeah, I understand that. Um, yeah, and I admit, I, I haven't had a chance to think, at the, think about whether or not there's a better name here for what we were calling entity. So yeah, I don't know that I have a resolution to this either. I think it's just something that I'll think more on uh, in the coming days here and see if I can come up with anything. And I'd encourage others to also take a look at this. Um, and it does look like that maybe some of this was batch replace um, where some of these variables get really odd names. Um, and, and there's some other oddities throughout the code as I was reviewing it that just seems a little odd. I'll also note that we kept the word entity in every single comment, <laughs> um, but so we uh, removed some, it elsewhere. Some methods with uh, entity uh, in the name, signed by entity type, for example. Yeah. Yeah, so we need to come up with a better way to do this uh, name replacement and come up with a better name in general. While good names are, of course, important for uh, clarity when reading the code, I, I'm also a little bit worried if, I mean, we we could waste, quote unquote, waste a lot of time with this, of course. I, yeah, I understand. I agree. I think the, the and concern... And everybody keeps using entities outside of this context. I mean, I'm afraid that that, that word is already a bit too established actually. And I, when you were saying this, I was actually thinking like maybe, you know, we have already lost the opportunity of, of uh, finding a different name because everybody keeps referring to that outside of this meeting. Yes, I understand. Um, I still think that the name entity here is very misleading because entity is not an object. That, that's something that Mark had pointed out in a past meeting. Um, we try and use it as an actual DSpace object, but it's not. Um, the way it's implemented, it's more of a wrapper around an item and its relationships, which is probably why the name item relationship came about uh, throughout this. Um, but even the word entity itself is, is not the proper one for the code, regardless of what we call it outside of the code. Yeah, I know, I know, and I agree with that, but it's just a little bit uh, frustrating to go back and forth. And I mean, the, you can imagine yep. that this is also not the most fun task to give to a developer. No, I totally get that. Um, yeah, that, that's, I don't think this is a high priority change in the code base. I'm not worried about getting this in ASAP. Um, I just wanted to bring up the, the, this in this meeting so that we all had a chance to look at this and see the fact that these these names are very, the name replacement is very odd now, and we needed to come up with a better solution. And that one of the, that better solution could be we put it all back to entity or some aspect of that. Um, I don't want you all spending more time on this until we come up with a an actual plan here, though. Okay, yeah, that, that's what I was going to advocate for that we just 
you know, somebody lists these terms and then, yes, you know, makes a map and then we can give that map to the developer and the developer will sigh and say, okay, sure. If this is the last time, then I'll do it. So. Yep. Understood. I agree. I think we should come up with a list of possible names here and then make a decision on this once and for all. I just wanted to point out the problem again. Um, so yeah, folks have a chance to take a look at this and, and just get us just even add into this PR. Uh, what other possible ways of wording this uh, seem reasonable to you, then I can kind of um, do the same on my end. Uh, and we can bring this back at a future meeting and come to a final decision. So there's no rush on moving this pull request forward. I mean, we can leave it as is until we come up with a decision on how to move it forward. Sounds good. Okay. Um, so that's the fourth one. Uh, the fifth one here. Retrieving relations per relationship type. Um, and this is the only one that I admit I did not get a chance to actually do a review. Um, all I had noted was that it had a Travis failure, which I see, Ben, uh, you already got resolved. Um, I did not get a chance to do a review of this, so I need to actually review this myself. Um, the one thing I did note, notice when I looked at the Travis failure here is that um, at some point, um, it would be good to start to document or at least getting some notes together on the REST contract for entities, because uh, this is an area that, uh, that we're adding in some new types of endpoints or enhancing endpoints um, and relating them back to existing endpoints like facets. Um, but it would be good to start to kind of draft up what that REST contract starts to look like, uh, just so we'll have that ready to go as we move this into the DSpace 7 code. Yes, that's definitely a good idea. Uh, and I'll note that down to start working on the REST contracts. Yep. Yeah, that'd be that'd be very useful. And if it's if it's uh if it's at all useful, we could even create a, an entities branch on the REST contract project, just like we've done um, with both the Angular project and the main DSpace DSpace project. We can create a configurable entities branch there to start adding REST contract directly into there, if that's the easiest place to add it. Um, I'd just like to get us started with it soon, uh, rather than doing it all at the last minute. I don't know if you have any comments, Ben, on where the best place to add this would be, if you'd rather have that entities branch, or if you'd rather just draft up the REST contract elsewhere in a Google Doc or wherever. No, I'm fine with going for the, the, the separate branch. Okay. I will create a configurable entities branch then in the REST contract, and we okay. can start to move things over there. Thanks. Sounds good. Uh, so this is one that I, I will make some time to review before I head off on holiday. Um, is anybody else um, able to, to review this in the next day or so as well, this 2302? I will take a look on it uh, tomorrow. Okay. Thank you, Paulo. Okay. So it seems like we've got a pretty good plan then for everything listed here, the Angular UI, PR, as long as our, well, everybody, every, everyone except for number four in terms of that's more of a brainstorming thing, which we'll set aside for now until we can come up with a better term. Uh, but the other ones are all, all seem to have a uh, plan forward and hopefully we can get most, if not all of these merged uh, this week since several are, are ready to merge and several are almost ready to merge. I, I did talk with Art briefly um, um, while you were going over the other pull requests and uh, he commented that that same um, comment from Paolo had also been made by you, Tim. I'll paste in the chat the link. So you can go to it directly. And Art's feedback on that was that um, he sticks with what he said there. He said, uh, 
This makes a lot of sense, but it's a bunch of moving and renaming files, so I prefer to do so in a follow-up pull request. That's the, the last point. So I was wrong. Oh, right. Yeah, okay. That's right. Yeah, I forgot I had added that in there. So it is, it's, yeah, it's pretty similar to what um, you, had, you had noted, Paulo. Essentially, Angular is this concept of modules where you can package up related uh, components into a module and so if we had a module per item type or entity then you can kind of just drop those modules in and that also groups together their related components so yeah, that is the same concept I forgot about that completely yep <clears throat> so when Art said that he preferred did this one be merged and then that we schedule a follow-up pull request to deal with that yep yeah okay. I'd agree okay by me okay that sounds great Okay, just writing a, a note down here on that. Okay, then I think we are good on these pull requests. Um, where's my list here? Okay, so we're good on those ones. Uh, did we want to touch on the new Angular PR? Is that the only new one? Let me go up to the. Uh, yeah, that's the only new one. The the virtual update metadata was in the original pull done in the original pull request. Um, and I can give you the link to the prototype where you can see what this does, um, actually. So that's, oh, sorry, one second. Here's, <clears throat> okay. And it might be useful to add this link into the PR itself just for review purposes, which I can do here. Just a second, I'm gonna edit Art's thing real quick and just add it in <laughs> at the bottom. Okay, um, okay, so did you wanna go over this at all real quick? Yeah, it's or a little just... bit more than just this page. It's also on the simple item page for the articles themselves. So this adds virtual metadata to the articles relating the journal to the article. Okay. And then builds this search component with a predefined filter that says everything with, um, if, you, if you click on the first one, for example, you'll see. The uh, first one being what? Oh, the first account. article? Oh, okay. And then go into the, so you see on the simple item page here that now journal title and journal ISSN, which is metadata from a third level relation is right. being shown here. And if you go to the full item page, you can see the um, at the bottom, the relationship that has been added in the virtual metadata, the relation is journal of publication, the second to the last. Uh, and that's the yep. yeah, and that's the UUID of that journal, and so okay. those are the changes needed in order to have that search component there. That uh, awesome. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. Okay, so that that's good to see it. Uh, see a live version of that. Um, and is this dependent on? I'm assuming this is dependent on um, something on the rest side or is this already uh yeah it's dependent on the 2270 uh right ben pull request the entity's virtual metadata update one okay so the first tab you have there next to the meeting yep. there we are that's the rest api side if I'm not okay since ben is not interrupting me i'm probably correct <laughs> yeah, I, I'm still checking, but I think so. Okay. Okay, so then, um, yeah, so in any case, we should be at a place where we can go ahead and review this Angular code. Um, and it looks like it's including all of the original commits, too, since that's why it's 5,000 lines, I'm assuming. I actually think it's dependent on pull request. 2302. 2302? Uh, I'm a little bit in doubt. Okay. 
That's the retrieving yeah. relations yeah. per relationship type one. Yes. I thought that was for the display of relations code. If I was. Oh honest. yeah. That's right. So that, that that's not in a pull request. Okay. Sorry, my bad. Okay. Yeah, my, okay. So we are we sure of that? It would be nice to add that into here. Basically, what it's dependent on, essentially, um, on the rest side, just so we know. Um, I'll double check with Art, but I'm 99% sure it's the 22701. Okay. Sounds good. But um, but I can take a look at this and give this a, a code review as well. Um, and and yeah, again, I guess it would it'd be nice to get a, a second opinion, second set of eyes. Uh, Paulo, if you're, if you're willing to give this one a look or okay. Alexander, yeah. Um, and I do want to double check if this is, since it does have 123 commits, I think this is including the entirety of all of the initial pull request, initial entities one. Yeah, so it's probably the, just the last few commits. This is 5,582 lines, 5,762. So it's probably just the last few commits here that are different and that need review. But Art confirmed it's the 2270 and he said, I'll add it to the description, but I told him that you were already doing that. Ah, uh, okay. 2270. Yep. <clears throat> okay. I'll update that then. Okay, so we'll go ahead. I'll, I'll get this uh, reviewed as well this week and we'll see if we can move this forward um, shortly after um, merging our main entities PR, which will be ready to go shortly. Fantastic. Um, any other updates on any other pull requests that I, that I missed? I think that's it. But is there anything else we need to review in terms of work that's ready to go already? Uh, not at the moment. We did have something else that we were working on, but where we, let's say, stumbled upon a discussion point, um, but we haven't discussed it internally either. Um, so we also want to um, wrap our heads around it a little bit more. Um, we had some preliminary discussion earlier today, but we we haven't gotten to an agreement on our side um, yet. Because normally, I, I don't know if you remember from our last meeting, the display of relations section in the Google Doc that we had. Uh -huh. um, where the way that relations are displayed on an item page can be configured to be dependent on how many relations there are for an item. So let's say if you have more than 10, you would serve a search component. If you have between zero and five, it would just be a comma separated list. If you have between five and 10, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, but there we were discussing like, you know, that means that it could happen that you have three search components in one page. And on a usability level, I mean, it works, but on a usability level, that's, probably not the best thing to do. Um, and yeah, we were having discussions about how to deal with that. Um, and we did do a comparison with uh, DSpace Chris, how they're dealing with it. Okay. Um, but yeah, we don't, I mean, we could go into that discussion, this meeting and the what's coming next, but I don't know if we'll have time for that. Cause, uh, yeah, it sounds like a bigger discussion possibly. Okay. But yeah, if you, um, it, yeah, if there's any any way we can help dig into this between this meeting and our next meeting, uh, or we can bring it to the next meeting, one of those two, it seems like. Uh, but I, I guess at this point, the based on our current timelines, I'd recommend us trying to keep it relatively simple for the preview release. There's always the opportunity to enhance things after the preview release, but I don't want us to overthink and over-engineer any of this um, in the preview release, since it'd be nice to get things in front of people uh, and see how they react, essentially. 
Yeah, that was also what, what I said earlier today is that you prefer to have like the code be good, but we could comment and say, look, from usability standpoint, we'll still review and improve this. Right. Um, so, yeah. But we'll have that for the next meeting. I'll, we'll discuss it at that time. Okay. What the different options are that we see. Okay. Um, okay. So let's move along into these. We're kind of already getting into these. These last two somewhat go together uh, in terms of that. Um, I just wanted to make sure we can kind of keep things moving along here over the coming weeks since I know folks will be heading off to holiday. Um, and I specifically will be out uh, starting later this week. So I only have today and tomorrow that I'm in the office. Um, I will do as many reviews as I can in that time, but if I don't get something done today or tomorrow, it's not gonna happen until January 3rd um, because I'm gonna be completely out going kind of offline as best I can uh, during that time period. Um, but I guess uh, the, the thing I wanted to ask this group is just kind of um, what are our next plans in terms of what, what do we need to, what do we see coming next? Um, uh, I think we've already kind of assigned some reviews and re-reviews in terms of the upcoming pull requests, but it'd be kind of, kind of, it'd be good to kind of talk through uh, the coming weeks, uh, what everybody's schedule is, and how we can just kind of keep things moving along, as well as I'd really like to hear, um, especially from Atmire and everybody else as well, uh, how we feel about the preview release schedule. Uh, there is an opportunity tomorrow, um, the steering group meeting meets one last time for 2018. So if we feel concerned in any way with the preview release schedule, uh, we can talk with them about it. Um, if we still feel like everything's on schedule and we're good to go and we feel that January 17th sort of soft deadline for getting everything ready by that date is still good, then we can leave it as is. Um, so I guess I'd like to get your opinions and uh, and also hear a little bit about your your schedules upcoming here so we can get a sense of what's coming up and who can work on it. Yeah, so maybe I'll start from our side. So from our side, we do have some um, important project deadlines in January, but that shouldn't be a huge problem. Um, okay. What we think that still really would need to be done before we can incorporate this properly into the preview release is um, the thing I, I mentioned um, two minutes ago, the display of relations, like you know, um, being able to properly define what should be shown as a search component, what as a pageable list, what as a, a, a comma separated list, et cetera, and mixing those in, in one item page. So that's one thing. And the second one is also related to how entities, uh, sorry, how item types are shown. Um, and that is mixing plain text metadata values with entities in one um, metadata field. For example, if you have an author, author's list, so number of authors for a publication where two are plain text metadata and two are entities, to have them display properly um, um, so that you know, they're all, for example, in a comma separated list, but that the two ones that are entities are clickable and link you through to, the, to their uh, person page or profile page, however you want to call it. So those are two things that, are, um, that we think that definitely need to be added for the preview release. For both of them, there is a first version of the REST API ready. Um, but Ben hasn't gotten around to review it yet, but that should be able, that should be doable. Um, there's also been some work on the Angular side already, so, but we are confident that we can get that done mm -hmm. by, let's say, January 17th at the latest. Um, but it would require a quick review if we want to get it in on time. Right. Um, and then... For us, the main next step, but I mean, um, yeah, it depends a little bit whether or not we want to have this in the preview or not. I think that's a, a discussion, but so the main next step for us would be to think about how to make relationships between items in the user interface. So right now there's no way to do that yet. The only way you can do it is through the CSV, which is, probably okay for the preview release. Um, and I'm, 
quite certain that it's not feasible anymore to create a UI component to be able to either um, add relationships uh, add or delete or edit relationships in either the admin added item or in the submission. So, but that's, I think the main missing piece at this moment, but we could table that for the beta um, and just have that be part of the marketing and say, look, for, na for now, you can only use CSV import to create these relationships, but a facility will be added to those two places to the submission and the admin added item. Um, I don't think it's worth postponing the preview release for, especially since we don't have, I mean, we have a timeline for the submission, but since it's been postponed quite a few times, I would err on the side of caution. Right. Um, you know, making assumptions on when it's actually going to be there and in a reviewed state and in a state that we can continue this work on top of it. Um, so. Right, plus we need the admin UI, which is also not complete if, the, if you're gonna manage relationships in the admin UI as well, right? Uh, yes, but I think that one is for this week, if I remember correctly. Okay. Let me double check. But in any case, I, I agree with you that, that that's probably not, it doesn't necessarily have to be in the preview release. It'd be nice to have, but it doesn't have to be there. Um, of the things uh, you- the, the admin edit was for us scheduled for January 10th. So still would make it quite difficult to get something in by the week after for- right. Agreed. Um, so I'm realizing we might want to list these to-dos in our DSpace 7 spreadsheet. Maybe we need a separate section for entities. Uh, just to track um, what is left to do um, and, and make sure we're keeping ourselves honest with, with like deadlines for each of these things. Yeah, and I was also wondering like at some point there was some mention of merging this working group with the DSpace 7 group. Um, I don't know if that's still the plan or a good idea. My plan all along was that that would occur at the point that this group um, is basically ready to create a final pull request to the master branches of each of the code bases. So right now this work is this this group is working more internally to get entities cleaned up and ready for like a final sort of review. <laughs> essentially. Okay. And um, then when would you see that happen after we deal with the whole submission and admin added item or before or at the moment of the preview release? It needs to happen probably before the preview release, ideally. Because um, for the preview release, we need this code all in master. Um, so right now we've been working on code in a separate branch, a shared branch, but a separate branch. And in order for it to get into the preview release, it needs to be in the same branch that DSpace 7 team is working on. So at the point that this all goes to the master branches, um, that is the point that these two working groups probably should uh, merge or be in very close communication. <laughs> um, it's possible we still might wanna keep them somewhat separate if we just have way too much to discuss in a single meeting. Um, just to allow us to have concentration, concentrated discussion on entities specifically, but the two groups members would be much more overlapping at that point, if that makes okay. sense. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, at that moment when you know we're going into the submission, that's also the work that for science had been working on. So it would be good to have them in the discussion as well. I don't know if they're Agreed. not. Um, participating in the entities working group by choice or by the fact that they don't have the resources to do that? Um, my understanding from talking with Andrea is it's more because a resource issue. They're swamped right now with uh, a lot of customer requirements at the end of the year. And so he had to pull back from this meeting. So the last couple months. Um, but I agree that there would be specific discussions that we would want to pull them into um, and make sure that Andrea attended. Um, but okay, so back to topics here. Uh, I want to mention a couple things real quick. So I think these three things that you li listed need to go on the DSpace 7 spreadsheet. 
uh, just to keep us honest and we can work from that spreadsheet. I can create a separate section specific to entities. Right now, I think entities is all just one line um, and we can start to break that out a little bit more uh, because that'll be more useful both to us as well as to the DSpace 7 team as we get these groups working closer together. Uh, the other thing I wanted to note here is that in terms of the three things you mentioned, the display of relations, the mixing of plain text and entities, as well as the managing relationships and the UI, um, for me, the highest priority for preview should be the mixing of plain text and entities. Um, just because I think without that, things are just going to look really weird. The display of relations, I don't see as, I, I see it as being a usability issue, but it's not super high priority. And I think we could get away with just always displaying it as a pageable list or something like that um, and not really worry too much. And the managing relationships in the UI we already mentioned is too dependent on other things. So it may not be reasonable. That's I'm just my opinion. Glad to hear that because that corresponds completely with what we had here. So that was our number one priority was the mixing text values with the uh, entities or sorry, item types. And the second one was uh, um, second one was actually relations at added delete permissions so that at least that's ready to be able to build a submission or admin edit um, feature. Yeah, that makes sense. And uh, once I get this section added to the, the spreadsheet, I would encourage you, even if you wanted to go in and enhance it uh, with what you know is coming that would be useful or pass, pass your list to me and I can add it in there either way. Um, but I'll work on that before I head out to the holidays. Okay, feel free to remind me in the meeting tomorrow and I'll do it right after. Sure, yep, no problem. Um, okay, so that gives me a good sense. So um, in terms of stuff coming in 2018, are there any more pull requests that are planning to be opened in the next essentially week or week and a half that's left in 2018 here? There, I may be able to open up a pull request in the rest and uh, I'm not sure whether I can manage to do it this week and I'll be out of office between Christmas and New Year as well. You were okay. breaking up so I didn't hear the pull request for. Uh, for, the, for the rest for um, CRUD um, and for uh, mixing the um, entities and, and plain text. Okay, so that, that those are those two priorities that we just discussed. So the yes. rest of the API part, yeah. Okay. So I, I may be able to create those pull requests this week, but it may be early January. I'm not sure yet. Okay. Yeah, no worries. It sounds like if it ends up being at the end of this week anyways, I don't anticipate we're going to have a lot of reviewers that can get to it until January. Um, I'm assuming... Uh, Paulo and Alexander, you're probably out after this week as well? Yes. Yes? Yes. Okay. So, so yeah, Ben, if it ends up being more like the end of this week and you just don't have time, then early January is perfectly fine. I wouldn't try and rush something to release on Thursday or Friday since I doubt anybody's going to get to it until January anyways. Okay. I'll see what, where, where I get to Okay, you're cutting out there, but I think you said I'll see where I can get. <laughs> uh, okay, so um, so I think the last thing I, I think we're pretty good. We know what's coming next. We talked about we're going to get the, move this into the spreadsheet a little bit more, and I'll I'll start doing that this week as well. Um, and do we still feel pretty good about the preview release schedule? Uh, provided that everything else stays on track. Are there any concerns that we want to talk about here? From our side, it should be doable. Okay. okay. I think we should, get, uh, after the, this uh, preview release, I think we should get back to the, the discussion points uh, from the, the Admire document. They are, uh, I think they are important to discuss. I think they should be a topic in the, uh, I don't think the next meeting or the, the, the meeting afterward. 
Yes, yeah, I agree that there are some discussion points there that we specifically tabled for after the preview release. Um, so yeah, I agree, we would get back to those um, right after the preview release is complete. Uh, I don't know if we'll be ready to get back into them in the next meeting, but we can okay. see. Um, uh, and that's actually the next topic that I had here as well in terms of when we wanna meet next. Um, we could do either January 8th or I think currently we're on the schedule for January 15th just because I set it up every two weeks and that's four weeks out. <laughs> uh, but we could move it forward a week to January 8th and do every two weeks starting January 8th. It's kind of up to all of your schedules. For us, January 8th is fine. Um, I had one other topic, but I'll, I'll let other people comment on the date first. Okay. Anybody have preference on January 8th versus 15th? Obviously, the sooner we meet is probably the better just because we can get more achieved. Um, so I'd prefer to try and move it forward to January 8th. We do have a conflict with the DCAT meeting on that day. Um, so I'll have to find a different meeting room, but, uh, but we could still meet on that day. It's fine by me. Okay. So let's do January 8th. Um, I, will f I will look for a different uh, meeting room for us. We won't be able to use this one because uh, DCAT will be using it, but, uh, but I'll let you know where we'll be at. Okay, did you have one last very quick topic here, Levin? Yep, input for the marketing group. I think that's something we should discuss tomorrow as well, Tim, with the, um, if they ask you for an update on the Space 7 and entities and such, we should, um, I mean, for the preview release, it's not only important that we have the code ready and in a good state, but also that the marketing group is ready with all of their communications to properly um, put the word out that we did all this great stuff and um, have good descriptions of things. And I'm expecting that we will have to provide them with some input. Yes, yeah, I'm assuming that will be the, the case as well. Um, the marketing group, to my understanding, has not really been reestablished yet. So this might be more of a discussion that we need to bring to the steering group tomorrow. Uh, to get a sense of what their current status is and when they are meeting to discuss um, marketing of the preview release. Uh, because yes, I would assume that uh, either you or myself or whomever from this group should kind of liaison uh, with that marketing group and help them get the terminology and wording right around the entity's features. Yeah, and I mean, we have quite a bit of good documentation, I think, in, in the Google Docs, but it's probably too technical to be able to filter out what are the key points that we want them to highlight and things like that. So we, I would say bring it up tomorrow in the steering um, meeting. And then um, uh, in the first meeting, January 8th, we should put that as a topic and say, okay, you know, what do we need to do as a working group in order to provide the necessary input for um, whomever is gonna do the marketing, even if it's DCAT or if the steering committee wants to do it directly or something like that. Yep, yeah, I, I agree that, that that can be a topic for us um, at our first meeting in January. Yeah, I, I need to get an update on the marketing group itself. So this would be good to, to ask about in the steering group because I don't have a sense of, maybe they have started and I'm just not aware of it. I, I think Michaela's paternity leave is what uh, kind of put a stop to the marketing group. At the yeah, he was helping push that along a little bit more, yes. So it's possible that it's currently uh, sitting in an unknown state and we need to push on that and get steering to help us move that and establish it. But, but I agree, we can bring that up in the steering meeting tomorrow and then um, add it to our agenda for January. But yeah, I mean, I, in, in any case, it, it will have to ha have to happen that we need to provide some, you know, summary, maybe a few like template slides or things like that, that explains um, what we did and give some links and examples to the prototype and things like that, um, that can then later on be replaced by a live or by a, by a, a Duraspace based demo. I don't know if that's a plan 
Um, I don't know if we'll be able to achieve a Duraspace-based demo by preview release. I think that would be a plan for, say, once we get to beta, because that's around the time. Beta would be when, we, when I'd anticipate we'd have more of an actual sort of testathon, like a community testathon. And those community testathons tend to be on our, our own, uh, the Duraspace sort of hosted demo server. So I think that's more of a beta activity. I think the preview activity, it's still okay if these demos are running, um, hosted either at Atmire or For Science or wherever we can kind of get them running. Yeah, sure. I mean, we have one running already. We just need to clean up the data a little bit in order to have something that's presentable yep. for the preview release. I did that for like the journal example, but for author profiles, could use some, some help or some content to create something. Wow. Yeah, so, so in any case, the action here, I think, is we bring this to the steering meeting, um, get a sense of when the marketing group is, is meeting. Um, it's possible we could just have several of us join one of the marketing group meetings in January to talk specifically about entities with them, um, rather than having to try and brainstorm it all within our own entities meetings, but we'll see how this kind of works out um, uh, based on the discussion tomorrow. Okay. And uh, Paolo, if you have, because I've, I've seen your um, install at, at AirCap. Um, so if, if you have some, some good sample data that we could use with author profiles, um, that would be great, of course. So if you have a CSV with some good demo content, that would be great. Demo, not real, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Or okay. harvested from somewhere that's what we've done before. Okay, so I think we're I think we're ready to wrap up today. Um, I will get the the next meeting on the schedule then for January eighth at the same time, Tuesday, January eighth. Um, we'll we'll talk about the update that day around the marketing of the preview release. Um, and whether or not uh, we'll either discuss it that day or whether we'll have those of us interested from this meeting join a future marketing meeting. Um, we'll, we'll see what that, that turns out to be, but I'll add that to the agenda. Uh, and in the meantime, of course, uh, before the holidays here, uh, help out with, with some reviews, please, of course. So we can get all these things merged this week that are currently open, or most of them. And we'll uh, take it from there. And I think that's, I think that's basically it. Yeah, thanks again, Alexander, Paolo, and uh, Tim for all the review work that you've been doing. Yeah, and thanks for being so responsive, Atmire, and moving things forward. Thanks, Paolo. Thanks, Alexander. And I hope everybody has a happy holidays and a, and a happy new year. Yep, likewise. Okay, to you too. Thanks, all. Bye. Bye, -bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thanks. Bye.